Okay, we're live. We're live? Yes. Okay, order. Motion to convene into a public session. So moved. Second. May I have a vote? Uh, aye. 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 Motion passed. We will now have a redetermination of quorum. Oh, sorry. The time is now 7.49 p.m. We will now have a redetermination of quorum. Ms. Rose Gishier, president, not president. Ms. Belinda Monroe, first vice president, present. Ms. Susan Gooden, second vice president. president. Ms. Charlena Crouch, trustee. Present. Dr. Emily Moore, trustee. Present. Also in attendance, our district clerk, Noreen Green. Present. Superintendent, Dr. Wortham. Present. Executive cabinet members, Ms. M Michelle Van Eiken, assistant superintendent of educational services, pre-K through 12. Present. Ms. Tisha McVeigh, assistant superintendent of core curriculum and instruction, pre-K through 12. Present. Dr. Eric Nesowitz, Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources and Professional Development. Present. Mr. Gary Gentles, Assistant Superintendent of Business. Present. Ms. Arlise Carson, Assistant Superintendent of COLAR. Present. We will now stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to, to the Republic for which stands one nation, nation under God. God Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. National Anthem. <laughs> Very good. Well, no, you know, 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 you
Yes. Thank you. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A board. E1. May I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to block both E1 and E2. Yeah, the second. So I have a vote. Aye. 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 Motion pass. F business. May I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to block vote F1, F2, and F3. May I have a second? Second. May I have a vote? Aye. 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 Motion pass. F4. May I have a motion? Use of facilities, African American Media Network. A motion to block uh, to uh, table. Table is the side. Second. Okay. No, the motion is to table for more information. May I have a vote? Aye. 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 Motion pass. We're now at F5. May I have a motion? Yes. Can we please block votes F5, F6, F7, and F8? May I have a second? You got to do those separate. You got to refresh. Yeah, refresh. May I have a second? Block vote F5, second. F6, F7, F8. Okay, may I have a vote? Aye. 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 Motion pass. F9. Second resolution. May I have a motion? So move. Second. May I have a vote? Uh, aye. 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 Motion pass. F10. Energy performance contract. So move. Second. May I have a vote? Uh, uh, aye. 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 Motion pass. G. Human resources and professional development. I'd like to make a motion to block vote G1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. May I have a second? Second. May I have a vote? Aye. 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 Motion passed. We're now at G8. So moved. Second. May I have a vote? Aye. 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 Motion passed. And now congratulate Marsha Gell on your tenure. Welcome to the Roosevelt family. We're now at G9, Schedule B, Classified Staff Abolishment of Position. May I have a motion? So moved. Second. May I have a vote? Uh, aye. G9. Said nay? Mm -hmm. Nay. Aye. Motion passed. Three yeas, one nay. Age curriculum and instruction. There's no items tonight. Aye. The consent agenda. May I have a motion? To approve the consent agenda as is. So moved. Second. May I have a vote? Uh, aye. Aye. Motion passed. <laughs> okay, we'd like to congratulate our retirees. Okay, we're now at J, the superintendent's report. Dr. Wertham. Good evening, board, cabinet, and community. It gives me great pleasure to present the superintendent's report. Our mission is to educate the whole child to excel, thereby ensuring achievement for all. We want our students and staff to be healthy, safe, supportive, engaged, and challenged. Our vision statement is, we are Roosevelt, empowered, proficient, and globally ready. We I'm so grateful for the good news that we are going to present this evening. And other good news will come forward before you and the community at our next board meeting, and I am so excited 
about the direction of our district as seen through the eyes of the New York State Education Department. I'm grateful. Tonight, we give you our Assistant Superintendent for Business and Operations to share our financial goodwills. Thank you, Dr. Wardham. Gary Gentles. Thank you, Dr. Wardham. Uh, thank you, members of the board. Uh, thank you, community. Um, tonight, I'll be presenting the Fiscal Stress Monitoring Results from the Controller's Office. Um, the report identifies local government and school districts and fiscal stress are susceptible, susceptible to fiscal stress. The report prompts school district officials to take action in a timely manner to improve financial trends. So the first report is really about our financial indicators. Um, this is how it's scored. Um, it's 100 points in six categories. Uh, category is unassigned fund balance, total fund balance, operating deficits, cash ratio, cash as percentage, and percent change in short-term cash flow. The lower your score, the better your district is in, as you can see from the chart below. 65 to 100, you're in significant stress. 45 to 64.9, you're in moderate stress. Susceptible, you're from 25 to 44.9. And no designation is from zero to 24.9. Our district scored 20. So no points for unassigned fund balance, um, no points for total fund balance. Um, there are some points for our operating deficit cash ratio as percentage, um, no. No point for a change in short term cash flow. And some of the key points that created the score um, 2021 was pretty much the 2022, was the first of a three year foundation aid for state making the district whole. Uh, so there's extra revenue coming into the district. Um, this created extra fund balance for the district. Um, our total fund balance increased. And we also didn't borrow any money in 21 22. Um, if you can see from the chart, a, a three-year look, we had a good score in 20, which is 13.3, and we fell in 21, which was heavily due to COVID and the district having to borrow money to right. pay because we didn't know if the state was cutting mm -hmm. yeah. revenue or not. And then 20, 21, 22, now we're decreasing, so we should continue to see a decrease. Mm -hmm. As far as the environmental stress, um, the six indicators, percentage of economically disadvantaged students, student to teacher ratio, turnover rate of all teachers, percentage, percent change in property value, budget vote approved, approval percent, and percent of English language learners. A lot of these indicators are really not in control of the district, um, it's community driven. So, Significant, again, is 60 to 100. Moderate is 45 to 59.9. Susceptible is 30 to 44.9. And no designation is zero to 29.9. Currently, the district is susceptible to environmental stress um, for two reasons that's really not in the district control, which is percentage of economically disadvantaged students and percent of English language learners in district. Um, the key points, that continue to benefit the district in this area is we have a low teacher turnover rate, uh, property value decreased based on the new Nassau County tax assessment policy. So it's really lessening the burden on our taxpayers. 76.7% um, of our budget votes usually are usually approved. And as I said before, the district has no control over economic or language, student language learners. So over, as you can see, there's an ancient there. We did better over the last three years. In 20, we were at 50. In 21, we were at 46.7. And currently, in 2022, we're at 36.7. So we're trending in the right direction as far as our environmental stress. Mm -hmm. How often do we get the data? Once per year, and it usually comes out after we submit our uh, estimate three or four to the state. 
Thank you, Mr. Jensen. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you. Yes. And so when we received this from the state controller's office, then the documents that they sent, I sent to you. So um, in this format, we took that information and put it into a format that we can post on our district's website. I want to say thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. because that's been one of our yeah. And so, and so that's why we request put it into language that we and the community understand. Yeah. understand. And that way, when you're celebrating, we understand why you're celebrating, and we can join in, and we feel comfortable doing it. So this was wonderful, Dr. Burley. Also, gentles, great job. Just thank you. So, um, thank you. It just, I just want to say with this moment for a moment, because this doesn't just happen. You know, it's based on decisions that the board makes, recommendations from, from cabinet, when we gather our students and meet with our students and our staff. So it does it just happen? And so for that, I am extremely grateful for the collective. We have other reports that we will show you where we have surveyed our community, staff, and students about equity. And that report came to us last week, and we are still meeting with staff to share that information, but we will make um, that presentation to the board as well. We have an independent organization come and do an equity walk through all of our buildings based on our family and community education grant. And this was in partnership with um, Ms. Rochelle Gooding, who is working in a deputized person, community person. So we took that information, we started holding community groups parent groups, representatives from each building. And now we are in the throes of doing our um, community development. So all of this goes together. And as I said before, it just didn't happen by accident. This man, I get. So I want to, we can go back. I want to, to the superintendent's report slide. Thank you. I want to ask um, Mr. Gentles to introduce our guests this evening from Honeywell and Energy to, I just did, I guess Honeywell <laughs> and Energy to come before you this evening to talk about our energy savings component. I think this is the piece that's gonna get the district an award at some one of the upcoming conferences for the board being um, fiscally minded, and that's how we get the no designation, but now being conservative about the energy. That was time for you guys to start walking. <laughs> <laughs> got to play the music like the Oscars. We can hear it. We got to go. Yeah. <laughs> and once again, this didn't happen. You started this process last year. Mm -hmm. Let's see, last year. So we are working with state ed in partnership. Oh, not that. All right, hold on. And they have no, a brief presentation. This presentation will also be posted on the district's website so that the community can see about our. Conservation. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
this is it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back into yeah, Zoom and share the screen. Great. Now you can get bigger. Screen. Um, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, it's nice to see everyone again. Uh, as a reminder, my name is Justin Benoit. I am a senior project manager with Energia. Uh, we're going to be speaking, as, as Dr. Wortham had mentioned, about the energy performance contract opportunity that we've been working on with the district. Uh, so first off, just to give a quick reintroduction as to who we are at Energia, we are an engineering firm that specializes in owner's representative and engineering services for school districts and municipalities who are looking to embark on an energy performance contract. I won't give too much details or, or take too much time on that, but we have a vast amount of experience, over 130 plus projects that we've been involved with, all helping school districts to take advantage of this, uh, this initiative. Um, again, not gonna read through all the bullets, but just to highlight some of the benefits of energy performance contracting. Um, firstly, I, I like to note that this is something that's authorized by New York State Energy Law Article 9. Uh, this is a, a proven concept with state legislation, uh, rules and regulations associated with, with it. Um, but essentially, this is a budget neutral approach um, that in a way can offer some taxpayer relief. Um, and it allows districts to fund needed building improvements now and pay for those upgrades out of the energy savings that are generated. Um, so in that regard, there's um, a lot of benefit being that, again, you get the upgrades today. Um, they all work to drive energy savings for the district, and then those energy savings then turn into the funding source for the upgrades. Uh, this chart kind of represents that you know, in a graphic version, but essentially the district has a, a current energy budget today, uh, one that you'll be continuing to pay for the foreseeable future. Through an energy performance contract, we're able to install energy efficient upgrades that help to drive down that new energy budget. And then with the difference, the savings that are generated from your old energy budget to your current energy budget, you're able to firstly make your debt service payments and then any additional savings on top of that, as well as state aid, which is factored into the project, comes back to the district in the form of the project as well. Um, in a moment, I'm gonna pass over to Perry from Honeywell. He's gonna get into more of the project specific details regarding the financials and scope. Uh, but just to bring you up to speed as to where we are today, um, back in the winter, uh, spring of 2022, Energy issued a request for proposals document um, to garner site-specific EPC proposals from different energy companies. Uh, as a result of that process, um, there was a thorough evaluation process as well as interviews that were held with the respondents. Honeywell was selected to proceed with the next phase of the project. Um, over the summer, uh, we received formal board approval for Honeywell to proceed with that next step, which was really a more comprehensive audit to finalize the scope and financials. Um, and then that really brings us to this evening again, where Honeywell and Energia wanted to come to the board um, and share with, with the board as well as the community an update on the scope and financials of the EPC. And we were also seeking approval of two resolutions, which would allow us to move forward with the design uh, and implementation of the project. Uh, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Terry Gary from Honeywell. Thank you, Thank you Justin. <clears throat> so good evening, uh, Dr. Wortham and board and staff members. Um, Really appreciate the opportunity to give you a brief overview of the energy performance contract. Uh, and it was a great lead in kudos to Gary and the team on the on the um, fiscal report. I wasn't aware of that because I see this as an opportunity to to even improve upon that a way, a path to get done, as Justin said, uh, needed capital improvements in the district in a um, in a fiscally smart way. 
that will uh, further relieve the stress and, and give you a better score. We firmly believe that. Move on to the uh, Honeywell slide. Right there, that's good. So just a two second overview of Honeywell. Um, so we've been an energy service company for about 42 years. This is a very mature market, as Justin said, the energy performance contracting market. It started with the federal government uh, over 40 years ago. Um, many of you know Honeywell as a um, uh, probably a thermostat company. You have an old thermostat in your home. So we are also a very large manufacturing company and about 50% of our products are in the energy efficiency field. So uh, not only are we an energy services company, but again, the vast majority of what we make is energy efficiency related. So with that, I'm going to jump to the utility uh, slide right there. Where's your starting point? So this, this gives you a sense of what the district pays today, almost $2 million in the way of utilities, which is a combination of gas and electric. We are going that's to- That's actual, right? Mm -hmm. That's actual? That's actual from your last fiscal year, which is your 21-22 fiscal year. Thank you. 100% of all of your bills. Um, and that's what the state requires as our starting point. We need a, a baseline and they want us to use your your last full fiscal year. So that's what we've done. From that, we're gonna significantly reduce these costs and use those savings to drive needed capital improvements. And I'm gonna give you a brief overview of what those capital improvements are and, and go over what the economics look like. So we've got a total proposed project of a little over 23 million. We've got, I'll call it, free money. You've got rebates from the utility company that we're going to tap into for the district. We've got federal monies that we're tapping into under the Inflation Reduction Act, primarily for our solar work. That's going to drive an estimated amount of over $4 million to be used for this work. Then we've got annual savings, over $1.1 million. Again, we just saw that you spend almost 2 million. So we're driving over 50% reduction in your utility spend to pay for this work I'm gonna to talk to briefly. And then you've got a significant amount of building aid. Most of our proposed work is eligible for building aid. Not 100%, but I would say about 90% of this proposed work is eligible for aid. That uh, <clears throat> correlates to almost $1.2 million on an annual basis for 15 years that comes back to the district. So when you look at those monies coming in, utility savings, rebate dollars, and building aid, it more than offsets the cost for the district to go and borrow the $23 million to get the work done up front. Actually generates a very significant positive cash flow over the term of the deal estimated to be over $13 million over the term of this agreement. So what is the scope? There's 10 different energy conservation measures that are included in our project. I'm gonna quickly highlight four of them that are really the main drivers, what you see highlighted in yellow there. And if you can move forward, Justin, to here, here are the four primary measures. One, you've got a, a district-wide lighting conversion to LED. Most of your lights are, are older fluorescent technology. We're gonna convert all the buildings as well as the exterior, you know, from fluorescent to LED. And you can see it's over 10,000 fixtures. So it's, it's quite a large lighting project by itself. Mm -hmm. On the mechanical front, you've got numerous mechanical pieces of equipment that are near the end of their useful life that we are going to replace. Boiler plants at the high school, middle school, Washington Rose, new domestic hot water heaters, the middle school chillers. Uh, many of those compressors are down. You've probably noticed um, quite a difference during the summertime in the middle school over the last few years. That's the reason. You've got rooftop units, AC units, so a whole lot of mechanical equipment that is being replaced with new as part of this program. The building management system, the third measure there I wanted to highlight. The district already has invested quite a bit of money in a, in a digital control system district-wide that controls your mechanical equipment and can turn 
equipment on and off, they can uh, vary set points from the occupied period and then changing things at night, but it's not on every piece of equipment. So our project adds the remaining pieces of equipment onto that digital automation system, upgrades it to the latest uh, to the latest software version. And we're also going to replace, do a complete retro commissioning of every single existing device that you have today and replace any of those that are defective, control valves and, and temperature sensors. Um, there's been a significant amount of deferred maintenance over the years uh, where these systems, although they are digital and, and state of the art, they still need preventative maintenance. So there is a, a decent percentage of devices that during our four months of a detailed audit, we found were not working and need to be replaced. So at the end of our job, you're gonna have a 100% functional building management system where every piece of equipment is gonna be on it in a graphical, easy to use format, point and click. Um, we also have remote capabilities. You know, you don't need to be on site to see what's going on, to monitor equipment, to keep an eye on alarms. And Honeywell has the ability to do that as well, which protects the energy guarantee. Another set of eyes to make sure everything is working the way it's supposed to work. It allows us to offer the guarantee that we offer. And the last measure is a, uh, a sizable solar system district line. Every building is getting a, uh, a roof-mounted solar system properly designed is not every bit of roof space is, is structurally capable of handling the solar equipment. All that work has been um, completed over the last four or five months. We've got detailed drawings for that that get submitted to the State of Department. And we also have three buildings where we've got carports, the high school, middle school, and Centennial. I'm gonna give you a quick like Google Earth shot of each building location to show you um, roughly where the solar panels are being laid out. Here you can see, this is the high school combination again, roof mounted solar, as well as carport canopy systems. You can scroll ahead to the other schools. Here is the middle school. The other key with sizing this is every building has a different electrical load. And you've got to carefully size the solar system so that it generates enough electricity to be used by that building. You don't want to generate electricity or oversize the system, you know, beyond what the building needs, because economically you don't get the same dollar for dollar return. So all of these systems have been strategically sized, uh, as well as like the roof mounted system have been structurally blessed and certified that it will it'll work in the roof scenarios. The elementary school, as you can see, Centennial here. Moving on to Washington Rose, and then you'll see Ulysses Bias as well. Great opportunity because all of this solar renewable work is what qualifies you under the Inflation Reduction Act for significant federal monies. That really helps drive not only the positive cash flow, but all that other needed mechanical work for equipment that's beyond its useful life and, and in need of replacement anyway. What I stress here is just the environmental impact. You talk about doing the right thing also for the environment and reducing your carbon footprint. The key measurement you'll often hear is what's your reduction of, of, of carbon, carbon dioxide? And you can see the bottom, the amount there, over 3,600 metric tons of, of carbon reduction in your footprint. Quite impressive for the amount of work, and as, as Dr. Wortham mentioned, when you talk about promoting that to the public, those that that are that are in the market, those that are aware of what that means, it's um, uh, it's quite an impressive, you know, figure and, and reduction in your footprint. Why don't we scroll forward just to the timeline and give you a sense of, of um, where we're at today and what does it look like moving forward. So Justin touched on the first few bullets. The RFP was issued in December of 21. We were selected in July of last year, and then we embarked on a comprehensive energy audit all the way, all the way through Thanksgiving and submitted that comprehensive energy audit to Energia 
for their review. And they did a, a lengthy, probably like a five week review back and forth um, with questions between them and Honeywell. And we finally came to a, a final contract in December, December 16th. We had done some initial presentations to the board. We had also done some presentations back on January 10th. Um, and it brings us here tonight on the 24th asking for support, you know, to move forward with the contract so that we can submit it to the New York State Education Department. The goal is to submit by the end of this month, because currently there is about a 10 to 12 week backlog where the project, once it gets into the queue, will, will sit there before a reviewer is able to pick it up because they just don't have enough engineers up there. Although it's a pretty reasonable backlog, you know, Justin and I have seen the backlog in prior years to be as long as a year. So 10 to 12 weeks is not bad. So if we can get it up quickly here at the end of January, uh, we expect that they will then pick it up for review in April. We'll get approval in May. We're confident on the quality of our submission. So we're confident we'll get a quick review and approval. We'll then work with with Gary and the district's fiscal advisor to finance the project in June, and then we're ready for installation. That's the key is to take advantage of next summer's window to do a majority of that mechanical work before you know, the buildings are occupied then in the fall and the, and the heating season has started. So our goal is to really get a, a large amount of work done in the summer of, of this year. All in all, we're looking at no worse than an 18 month completion schedule, which puts us in December of 24. I firmly believe we'll probably do better than that. That's the worst case scenario. And that's also the start of the building aid. The earliest that the district can receive aid is 18 months after the job is approved by SCD, as long as you are done and we will be done. And then in January of 25, our guarantee begins. Um, the collection of a lot of the federal monies come in. And then we will report on an annual basis and keep track of your utility spend, you know, where the savings are at. Um, and as, as Dr. Wortham said, this is a partnership. So we, it's, it's a journey and we will be here throughout the installation period to report through monthly construction meetings. Um, we're certainly then responsible on the back end to guarantee the results. This is a big difference than a capital project because we've got every incentive to make sure the work um, operates the way it was designed or we're going to be paying for a shortfall. Under a capital project, after contractors are paid, they're gone. We're not. So we've got to keep an eye on the equipment, work with your facility staff, um, and like I said, report contractually anyway on an annual basis of the results. Energy is part of that journey. They, they, they look at that report. Um, they review it just like they review the confidence energy audit. Um, and we continue to move on from there. So with that, I'll take a pause and answer any questions from, uh, from the group. How long would it take to finish a job like this? Worst case, 18 months. So if we start in June of this year, you know, we're projecting no worse than December of 24. So how would you power, power up a school if you guys are working on systems? For the solar system, all of the interconnections are done, you know, appropriately after hours. So you're, you're on the grid now, so you continue to get powered up. You know, we don't disconnect anything while, you know, you know, school's in session, you've got to you do all that solar work and then you carefully schedule that interconnection at a point where you can do it, where power is not required. But that, that's usually the obviously the last piece and it's done very quickly. So, okay. Okay, board, any questions? Yeah, Terry, you said the district and Honeywell will be able to monitor remotely? Correct. So that building automation system, um, it's your staff. You don't need to be, everything comes back to a central server. So Warren could be sitting at a computer and he can see every building, but he can also access that server from his smartphone, from his and laptop at home, and as well as 
Honeywell can. And that's a good thing because it gives us, you know, a window into the system, again, to make sure that things are operating the way they were designed. So if we see something, you know, that's running at night, we've got a 24 seven staff that monitors critical points. We can call Lauren the next day and say, the boilers were running over the weekend. Was there a reason for that? And we know there are, you know, we built into our couch, you know, we know things need to run at night and on weekends for certain events, but we check on it. And he might say, you know what? No, it's not. We were working on it and we didn't put it back into auto mode and we catch it right away. We don't wait until the end of the year and you've already spent the money with National Grid on gas and say, you know what? It's not our fault because five months ago you took it out of auto mode. That doesn't do anybody any good. So. But currently we're doing that. So you're going to be upgrading the framework. Correct. You, you've got to, if I use percentages, probably 75% of your district is on already a Honeywell tritium mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. um, so we're taking the equipment that's not on there, putting it on there. So you're 100% now in the system. Mm -hmm. And we're upgrading the uh, to the latest software. A little bit faster, can hold more memory. Um, but you have a very good start into a digital system, which... Um, most districts where we do a, an initial energy performance contract don't have that. They've got older pneumatic controls and it's a, it's a complete kind of reboot into a digital system. You, you're, you're well on the way. We're just kind of finishing it for you, so. We heard that statement Thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're asking for the opportunity to finish it for you, so. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. And I would like for you to expect communication from our technology department so that we can get that space reserved on the district's website. You got it. Okay. Through the install period for updates and to keep the public aware of where we're at, right? Exactly. Like it. And we should be starting in June, right? We'll be so we, we've got a little bit of support here from the district just to get paperwork signed. Um, the key is to get it into that queue because nothing can happen until you get the project submitted to SCD. But yeah, we want to. We will start in June. Great, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Burda. We now move to our public comment section. Before we begin this meeting's public comments, as we do at each board meeting, let me remind everyone that members of the public wish to comment on action items or have specific concerns they would like to share during the board meeting. I ask to please complete a public comment card, the card should be submitted to the district clerk prior to addressing the board. In order for the district clerk to maintain accurate records of the meeting, each individual addressing the board is requested to state his or her name address and or organization affiliates. Each person will be allowed to speak a maximum of two minutes. The Board of Education and or the administration may respond at the conclusion of the questions and comment portion. They may also choose to respond verbally or in writing at a later date. Citizens may also communicate to the Board of Education via, via email at boe at rufsb.org or by addressing the letter to the district clerk. Roosevelt New Preschool District and 248 Denton Place, Roosevelt, New York, 11575. We are very proud of the professional and respectful way in which we speak to each other. Nothing less will be tolerated. No one has the right to speak in a derogatory, libelous, accusatory, or inflammatory manner toward any member of the board, administration, or staff. If that should occur, permission to speak will be immediately rescinded. As always, public discussion on matters relating to staff and students at which their reputation, privacy, or right to due process of those of others could in some way be violated is prohibited. At this time, we have two public comment cards, one from a, say the, um, <coughs> Scott. I'm sorry, Mr. Scott. Mr. Scott? Mm -hmm. Yes. You can share your comment at this oh, time. Uh, no, no, I didn't want to go ahead of it. Oh, is there a certain? Was there? Yeah. Doesn't matter. Okay. No, no, I just grabbed the card. My name is David R. Scott of Roosevelt. Uh, I probably end up telling you my age. I came in 1944. This community was an entirely different community. People, our children, and so forth. And the reason I came is because we've been meeting for the last eight years. 
We've been forcing the police department to sit with us, go through changes in the community. We're concerned about our children from kindergarten to high school and beyond. And we've been trying to work on that because people live in the community. They don't really know what's going on around them, the things that are happening, but they bring to us in the police department. One lady was sitting there next door, something happened. If someone was robbed and beaten, she didn't know anything about it. We have a senior housing project here. Seven young men were arrested the year before last, selling drugs at Centennial Park. Why? Why were they in that housing park? They had no business being there. So are we really watching? We have 51 churches in this community. <clears throat> in my time, it wasn't allowed. What are they really doing for our community, for our children? That's our concern. The other day, a kid walked into first grade and shot a teacher. There's something wrong here. I'm very happy about the superintendent, what she's trying to do and how far she's brought you, the district. And uh, we're, we're excited about that because we remember when this district went downhill, way downhill. And look where they are now because of leadership. It makes a difference. Hempstead High School is one of the best high schools in the state of New York when I went to school in the city. What happened to them? It's what we do within our community. So all we're looking for is people to come to these meetings we have once a month. We used to have them at Ball Presbyterian, but they're doing work. We had them at the First Peace Saint for the last year. And of course, we have a tabernacle joy on the book side for the time being until we move back to the regular place. But when I sit in those meetings and I see parents come, parents who raise children, they're seniors. Where are the parents of these kids? 12 or kindergarten to 12th grade and beyond. And are they really concerned? That's my concern with our community, the things that go on. And our children, how we protect them. <clears throat> a young kid was shot last year, sitting in his mother's car, three years old. A few years ago, a young lady was sitting in a living room with her grandmother, 12 years old in his state. A bullet came through the window and killed that child. My, my family's been in law enforcement for more than 50 years. They've never seen or heard anything like this. All I'm saying is that when you have these meetings, please have the parents come out, get involved, see what's going on, and know what's going on around them. We cannot allow the things to go on in that senior housing party that's going on. We met with the town, we met with the county, we met with the housing department, and we push them. You've got to do something. Brother Chidi, I think you know him in town of Hips in Nassau County. He said to me, he said, my mother was there when they first opened. They had security 24-7. Alarm systems, if you came to the door, they knew who you were. Now they don't have any of that. They got to get back to, to doing that. Those senior citizens, it's, it's, it's not right for them to live like that and live in fear. And when someone tells me that I don't sleep at night, I sleep during the day, there's something wrong. And I know Roosevelt is better than that. Parents have to come together about and ask questions about their children. What kind of protection can we get? What do we need to do to be safe? And I don't care what anyone says, we're still not that safe. There are people that don't want to ride the subway, they don't want to ride a bus, don't even have a problem flying on an airplane. But what's going on with our country? It's because things are allowed to be. People are not standing up. So all we're asking is parents come out to these meetings, ask questions. And let's see if we can make some changes here. Thank you so much, and God bless. Okay, can you just say, say where, where you're, yeah, yeah. Where, where you're from and where your meetings are located? Well, our um, last meeting was at um, uh, on Brookside at the uh, Tabernacle Joy, right by the Silver State Parkway. That's where we've been meeting lately because normally we would meet at Tabernacle Joy, uh, Memorial Presbyterian Church for years, and then we met at, uh, last year. We met at. For, about a year we met at the first precinct. And what's your organization? Heaven, helping to end violence now. Okay. So, Mrs. Scott, you were yeah. there oh, when so this entire cabinet came and board members came yeah. to the library and presented. Mm -hmm. Right. So, if you say this, if you, Bishop Mackey makes us aware of the meetings, and I would deputize each cabinet member to take a meeting mm -hmm. and come back and report to the board. Thank you. Thank you. And we'd like to see more parents so they can ask questions. Mm -hmm. Don't wait till your son shoots somebody. Don't wait till your son get hurt. Don't wait till a, a child is killed. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. We have to get 
Thank you so yeah. much. Well, so do you put out flyers for your meeting? Because if you can uh, follow Well, them. I've given flyers here. I've got flyers they, in the office. I've got flyers in all the elementary schools. Yes. yes. Okay. And we've tried to call everybody and let them know. Okay. So we'll do that. Can we forward it to Ron? Yes. So yeah. use a text message and all of this. What we do is yeah. when we get the, and I will tell you why, is when we get the, the flyers from Bishop Mackey, I send it out to all districts and board here on all districts. And see that? Yes. Yes, Kevin. And then the, it's placed in the Google Classroom for, for parents. So that's covered. But I'm just getting an agreement from Cabinet to each take one meeting and uh, just give us a synopsis of what happened that, on that meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the Yes. Well, Bishop will send that to you this time with me. So let's okay. that information. Ms. Van Eiken, can you make sure that uh, Ms. Rochelle bidding? Right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Okay. Our next comment is from Karen Keen. Yes. Hi, good evening, everyone. My name is Karen Hing. I'm the parent of a freshman here, ninth grader. This is my husband. Um, we recently moved into the community about a year ago. Um, our son hasn't had a chemistry teacher for over four months. Um, we tried contacting the school. First of all, let me give you a little background about him. He's a gifted and talented student from Brooklyn, from kindergarten all the way through. He attended the junior high school here. He was inducted to the honor society there, and he came to you as an honor student. He's taking advanced classes. Um, he hasn't had a chemistry teacher for over four months. We contacted the school several occasions. In the beginning, no one would answer the phone. We did this for weeks at a time. No one would answer. We did a little uh, test. We, we called, called Garden City. Garden Everyone school. answered there. We called... Um, uh, Baldwin. Baldwin, Merrick, Ford. everyone answered the phone. For some reason here at Roosevelt, no one answered our call. Um, finally, I did get to speak to someone last week um, and they said, oh, she's still out. Uh, give us some time. We're working on it. That's so unacceptable. I've had to get tutors for him, okay? It started out with $300 a month, four sessions a month. The tutor said, that's not enough. He's so behind. It's ridiculous. You know what he told me? That no one is in the classroom with him teaching. They bring in someone to just do the attendance, and then they just sit there with their books open. They have no idea what they're doing. And this is an honor student. If he has no idea, what about the children who are barely getting by? This is a... a a child that scores, he, all of his grades are 90s and 100 with a 60 it in chemistry a 60. that will devour his GPA. We're hope, we brought him here because the principal told us when he, he left, he said, give the high school a chance. Don't take him to Kellenberg. Give the high him. school a chance. And we brought him over here. Just he to see. loves the school. He's made so many great friends. He loves the community. We love the community. We could have lived anywhere, but we chose here. And I'm so, I'm so disappointed about what's going on in this chemistry and class. Not to mention, there's a regency test coming up. I mean, how are you going to, you know, teach these kids? And there's a region speed, and you guys are showing them that you're failing them before they even get out of the box. That's like that's it's, like that's unacceptable. It's, it's and not, I'm sure everybody in there have kids. Okay. And I kind of understand why it's like that because I came in here and I was looking at all the flags that is hanged up outside. You could hardly see the American flag. There was there was a lady that came here and I was talking to her outside. She couldn't speak any English, mm -hmm. Spanish. And she came here because she wanted to know when was the next parent-teacher meeting. You know, we understand that you guys sent out emails to us, but do y'all send it out in Spanish? These are the things that y'all have to change. The community is not just only English-speaking people. Your flag, Sorry, would you like to comment on your flag showed it. 
no. South American, European. Yeah. What are we doing? Okay. You know, I'm very, I'm this so upset about bad. this. This chemistry. Can we, um, just so you know, we do communicate in Spanish with um all of oh, our. Oh, it's not for us. We're not Spanish. As well. No, I'm just letting you know because you made the statement. So I'm addressing the statement that you made. We do communicate in Spanish. Okay. All emails and our um, letters and everything that goes out. So we do do both languages. As far as the chemistry class for your, your son, we are concerned. Your, your concern is our concern. Mm -hmm. And um, we'll have the superintendent, Dr. Wortham, contact you. But I just have a question as far as your chain of communication. Were you able to contact the principal of the high school? I was able to speak to, with the assistant principal. There was never, we never spoke to the principal. No. And then Always we did the speak vice to principal. the director, director of curriculum for the Roosevelt. Okay, so now, you have she, spoken to yes, the, she uh, did. the principal and then also you escalated to a director. Yes. So this we is don't, why we don't, we don't want to bring too much, to too, much, too much media attention to all of this was going on. Okay. We really don't want to do it, but something got to happen. Okay, well, we appreciate you informing us and we, we understand your concern and you now have the attention of the Roosevelt Superintendent of Schools, Dr. Wortham, and she will be addressing you and a school board and a Roosevelt School Board of Education. And we- We are paying for the tutor. But you know, just as um, as COVID, they had a Zoom. You know, if this teacher that, you know, we are talking about, ankle is broken. Now that one, it's a personnel issue. We can't yeah, discuss of course. It. No, but we called teacher. her. We spoke with her. We, I spoke to her. We called her and spoke with her. She said, I can't I can't tell you anything. All I can tell you is that there's someone there at the school teaching. No, there isn't. So there's it's not no that one. we're not doing our homework. We're reaching out and we're going through all the channels. Um, and this okay, is our there, final channel right here. Discovery protocol. What are the efforts that the Human Resources Department has put forth? I did hear from Councilman Goosby today and I asked for um, Mrs. Blue to contact you today. I this is the, so yeah, that's why you heard from uh, the curriculum and instruction department today. Dr. Nesowitz, what effort and board you have, you have signed, we have increased the, the capacity to hire a, a an additional chemistry teacher. Mm -hmm. So yes. you would have I have two. a suggestion for you. So there you go. You have a lot of kids in hot hostel university that want to be teachers. Mm -hmm. And they don't have they don't mind coming over here mm -hmm. and teaching some of these kids. Right. So, so we're looking for solutions. Mr. Mr. Um, King, we if you call my secretary, we will talk about all of the measures that we have put in place and that I'm not hearing right now. But I'm all send of the you, measures. I'm going to send you our, uh, what's the name, Bill? Because we do have tutoring in place for our young people. <laughs> it's not, Bill, not here. It it's is. not here. Not here. Yes. Do they still have the Saturday classes at Hofstra? But it's not specific to chemistry. Remember, it's coding. He's he's done all of that. He does all of those things. There's it's not specific to chemistry. Oh, well, then the other classes I'm talking about are they were specific. They follow your schedule. So you're taking okay. all right. So superintendent will be following up. Thank you, Ms. Dennis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, our next board meeting will be February 7, 2023. It will be a vision and business meeting, public session in person at 7 p.m. in the Roosevelt High School Auditorium. Yes. May I have a motion to adjourn? Second. May I have a vote? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. I'm